today's May 23rd, 2011, and there's been some new exciting developments in the PS3 hacking scene, so let's go ahead and get started. So uh, basically today what happened was there's a, there's a team, they're calling themselves No One, and what they decide to do is they, they're thinking of a way to dual boot the PS3. Now this isn't like a PC where you could just partition your hard drive, install Windows here, install Windows here, two different versions, install a bootloader and choose between them on boot up. That's not really how this is going to work. Um, this is all hardware related, so basically what this involves, I'll just go ahead and I'll bring up the PDF here. So I'll just uh, go ahead and jump through all this stuff because honestly I don't understand a lot of it. So basically what this is going to involve that when you boot up your PS3, there's going to be a little hardware switch in here somewhere that you can have it between configuration 1 and configuration 2. Now this is all pretty much just the rest of the boot process, you know, your, your input output, like you know, your USB and everything like that, Bluetooth, whatever, that all kicks up, everything. But here is where it really differs, this NAND Flash 1 and NAND Flash 2. Now what does that mean? Well, like under it, it says firmware 1 and firmware 2. That's where the dual booting comes in. But like I said, this isn't just, you know, with a bootloader. This is all hardware. So each every PS3 has one of these, a NAND flash. Now what that is, you know, say the hard drive is just somewhere over here. You install the firmware to that, but it also writes files to the NAND too. That's why you can't just, you know, downgrade a PS3 right from the software update. Because, you know, in that man flash, it remembers, like, it knows what firmware you're on, and it doesn't let you go below that unless you hack it. But so what this will allow users to do is have two firmwares, but in order to do this, you need to have two NANDs. And in order to do that, you have to solder one to the motherboard, and you have to, basically, you have to really know what you're doing to be able to use this. So this is not for regular people like you and me right now. This is for people that really know what they're doing and able to solder stuff to the PS3 and write software that, you know, once you boot up that, you know, it goes through both these processes, you know, it, this is going to take a lot of work. And, but people are working on it right now. But so, uh, what this will allow you to do, let's just say for the sake of the argument, you have your NAND Flash 1 up to date. You know, it's always on the latest firmware. Whenever Sony releases an update, you you update it on your NAND Flash number 1. So let's say right now, this would be on 3.61, and you can have PSN access, you know, your Netflix, everything up to date. But on this one, let's say you have 3.55 K-Meow or ITA. This will allow you to have your hacks and the official firmware, so you don't you no longer have to buy two PS3s if you don't want to risk being banned. Unless Sony could somehow detect you have two NAND flashes, which I highly doubt they'll be able to. So right now, like I said, it's all hardware. But once it turns to software, maybe Sony will have you know maybe once we can just have maybe one NAND. I, I doubt it's possible. I'm just kind of speculating here. Maybe if we even do have two NANDs. Maybe we won't have to install a switch, we can just, you know, boot it up and then maybe kind of like the uh, power eject thing, how that um, forces you to boot from USB first. Maybe we could do like power eject power or something. Someone could just write a little program like that would allow a bootloader to come up and then you can just select which one. That'd be very cool. Also what this will allow us to do is if we have, say, the, the hack firmware on NAND 2, we could, someone could write a program that would allow us to see the other NAND and then we could start decrypting, you know, the latest firmwares right as soon as we install them. So, let's say 4.0 comes out in the next couple months, year, whatever, and we have a custom firmware on here. We could install that, someone could write a program for 3.55 or whatever custom firmware is out then, and then we could be able to read this and start decrypting it and see what Sony changes, and then we could say, once the 4.0 KCAT comes out, you know, just kind of messing around there, um, then we can install that to number two, and then we could have both a hacked and an um, official on the latest firmware. So that would be very cool. But like I said, right now this in, this um, requires you to install or to like solder things to your motherboard, and you know this is very low high level stuff. No one like me could really do this right now. So it's not easy to do, um, but I would start to get kind of excited because we have a lot of very talented people working on this stuff as I speak. So hopefully in the next couple of days, weeks, couple of months even, we'll see some developments on this. And I'm sure kind of like when the PSP mod chip came out, people will be selling pre-modded consoles and you could just install whatever. This is sort of just like that PSP where the people installed the mod chip and you could have like two firmwares. You could just like hold a, a key combination on the PSP and it would boot to one or the other. This is kind of similar. So um, that's pretty much all I really have. There's not too much out about it right now, but I thought that PDF was kind of, it was a good way to look at it. So um, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, I'm at CPUKid on Twitter. Also check out itechcity.org and at itechcity on Twitter. However, just don't ask me too many questions because honestly, I don't understand the majority of the stuff in this PDF. This is very high level stuff. 
but I just kind of broke that down as well as I could for you guys. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So please don't ask too many questions about it. But if you have any like couple of vague questions, you know that's cool, or even some discussion questions. But just please don't ask me. You know when's it gonna come out because I have no idea. So that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching.